Hello friends, welcome to another tutorial in active filters. We'll discuss active low pass filter today. We'll discuss the first order low pass filter. In order to understand the active low pass filters functioning, we need to see its basic circuit diagram, which looks something like this course it has an operational amplifier as discussed in the introductory lecture of active filters and it does not have any inductor at the input port it has capacitor here and because of this capacitor here um, it is going to uh, behave differently for different frequencies so the arrangement in which the capacitor uh, and resistors are placed at the input port will determine whether it's an active low pass filter or a high pass filter for example if you look at the high pass filter circuit diagram it has this capacitor connected in series with the input voltage at the port and of course you have this resistor here that we'll discuss in the next tutorial but going back to the low pass filter it has this resistor here and this arrangement of these passive components will determine whether it's the first order filter or the second order filter or a high pass filter or a low pass filter for example if you look at uh, this circuit here so this this has a complicated um, set of passive components two capacitors two resistors connected in such a way that it'll act as a second order op amp active filter and of course it's a low pass filter but now that being said we'll come to the discussion of the low pass filter of first order the f step number one b will be to understand the non-inverting amp circuit now out of this this entire circuit of low pass filter I've just I'm just focusing on the uh, functioning of non-inverting amp circuit which has an input V2 given at the non-inverting terminal and this input V1 is at the inverting terminal but it is the feedback uh, input so if we look at this step number one the input is V2 and is given at non-inverting terminal and V1 is given at the inverting terminal and V1 is the voltage feedback signal now having determined this we need to see that the ideal op amp conditions are that this input uh, feedback current i in should be zero and the difference between the voltages at the two terminals should be zero that will in turn give us v1 to be equivalent to v2 now when v1 is equivalent to v2 uh, that means that the current this current which I assume to be I, I2 and this current which I assume to be I1 they become equal so once you understand this prerequisite of the ideal op amp uh, functioning from this point onwards everything is pretty simple so if we look forward further expressing the current i2 and i1 as v by r over here um, i2 which is of course the current flowing through the resistor r2 can be expressed as v naught minus v1 upon r2 and i1 which is the current through r1 is v1 upon r1 which is pretty simple and then a little bit of rearrangement uh, over here will give me the relation of v naught upon v1 which is 
this r1 plus r2 upon r1 and we've we've assumed that r1 and r2 must be same in this case so we get v naught to be equivalent to twice of v1 now once we uh, once we get to this point that v naught is equivalent to twice of v1 uh, after meeting these conditions or we talk in context with the actual filter that would mean that uh, v2 in our case over here is uh, VA so please understand this point that in our case in the low pass filter V2 of this non-inverting amp circuit is VA and we know that V0 is twice of VA from this equation once we know the relation of this output voltage to VA, we need to express VA, this voltage, in terms of uh, the voltage drops across this capacitor and resistor. So looking from the point of view of VA, uh, we've mentioned it here that it is zero for ideal op -amp conditions. So V1 gets divided over R and C, so I can write V A in terms of R and C like this. So this is the starting equation of determining the transfer function. So V A when expressed in terms of um, S which is the frequency domain component which is equivalent to J omega later on and putting V A is equal to half V naught I get the equation in terms of uh, omega so finally finally I get V naught upon V1 which is what we are desiring to find is our transfer function HS and it becomes equivalent to twice of S into R into C1 plus 1 now <coughs> the dependency of the transfer function upon uh, omega or the frequency gives me this because s is j omega we know that so if omega goes higher and higher the gain will become lower and if omega becomes lower the gain will become higher and that is the replication of a low pass filter uh, section or low pass filters characteristics so this hs represents the low pass filter characteristics of uh, the circuit so in other words this circuit is inversely proportional to s and it is not proportional to s square or s cube so because the power of s is one so it is the first order low pass filter and because s features in denominator only which which replicates the low pass filter section because at lower frequencies the uh, the gain will be higher so it'll allow the signals of lower frequencies to pass through them and it will block the higher frequencies signal by making the gain to be very very low so that is how we conclude that uh, a low pass filter section can be made by this arrangement and finally finally the cutoff frequency fc that you can remember is equivalent to one upon r into c or in our case it is c1 so you can remember the formula for cutoff frequencies to solve various numerical based questions and i hope this quick tutorial on the active low pass filter of first order and its derivation was of help if you liked the video give it a thumbs up consider subscribing to the channel and i highly recommend that you watch the introductory lecture of uh, active filters to better understand the uh, videos to come thank you so much for watching have a great day ahead bye